Neil from Essex here, and today we're going to talk about the latest thing that annoyed me on the internet. Essex, a helping hand with your land. So when you see something on the internet that annoys you, maybe you pound out a response or you scroll past and just kind of try to put that behind you and move on with your day. But I make videos, right? In the future, when you see people talking about Kubota hydraulic fluids, post this video in the comments, right? Because we're gonna talk about some of these details today. You're gonna see a lot of strong opinions when it comes to Kubota's two hydraulic fluids, UDT and Super UDT. There's some little different technologies in those buckets that we're gonna talk about. But if you look back here behind me, hydraulic fluids are something that's kind of near and dear to me personally, right? I, there's some Truths and misconceptions when it comes to these products. Truths in a lot of these things do come from similar manufacturers. Shell is the OEM for a vast majority of the hydraulic fluids out there. They all largely come out of the same factory. But at the same time, while they're bottling most of this stuff, there is little appreciation for the amount of technology and additives and uh, science that goes into these products. And just because they're all coming from the same place doesn't mean that they're anything alike. We've done other videos on this topic before, talking about the variety of additive packages, the percentage of them that could be in the oil, all the base oils that are involved. We'll link that video here in the description that really talks about this stuff. But the bit today that I wanted to focus on is the differentiation between Super UDT and UDT and why people's experiences running those two oils can be so different. If you flip through the manuals for these products, you're gonna see that Kubota has two different transmission fluids, UDT and Super UDT. UDT is a typical kind of dinosaur oil-based hydraulic fluid. There's not a ton of complex oil science in that. It's fairly similar to a lot of the other products that you would find out here on the shelves. Super UDT2, though, is a significantly more advanced oil than that typical dinosaur oil. And this is the oil that comes in your tractor from the factory, and you're also going to find in the front axle of new tractors as well. This is a semi-synthetic oil, so it is a synthesized product, and it has a very different additive package in it than what's in a lot of the other things that are out here on our shelves particularly when it comes to cold weather additives. The cold weather package that's in this oil is only duplicated in one other product in all of the shelves that we have up and down through here. When you spin buckets of oil around and you look on the back of them and they claim out compatibility across manufacturers' product lines, those compatibilities are solely the opinion of the company that bottles that oil. And you will only find one company, one bucket out there bold enough in order to claim compatibility with Super UDD2 and it's not any cheaper than what Super UDD2 is. It's an expensive additive package that dries up the cost of this oil. Now, when you look at this, you're gonna find this camp of people online that swears by this oil and its performance in their machines because it tends to quiet the transmission, particularly in cold weather. It keeps the valves quieter when you're operating your loader and your rear remotes. And in machines like the RTV, it makes the unit drive better. Now you'll also find people who will say that they've had similar experience and done just fine with regular UDT. I'm gonna tell you why, let's go for a walk outside. Part of the reason why people's experiences and opinions can be so different about oils is because their experiences have been different, right? Their equipment can be different. We're gonna start here and talking about transmissions first. And transmissions are important because in a lot of cases, they're using that hydraulic fluid in order to drive that tractor forward, right? Starting here just with a gear drive transmission, right? When you have a simple clutch and gear transmission, you have a wet sump there in the back that the gears are running inside of, and then a clutch attached to those gears, sometimes a wet clutch, sometimes a dry clutch. But that oil isn't crucial in driving that tractor forward, right? And so you can find people that are running just regular UDT versus super UDT and getting away with it just fine, right? Because the oil is not as crucial in that transmission selection. If you have a wet clutch transmission, you do wanna watch here in this regard of running a little bit more high-end oil because oftentimes there's modifiers in there that protect the wear on that clutch plate. Dry clutches can get away with maybe an off-spec oil, but wet clutches are gonna be more sensitive to it. Most Kubota equipment is gonna be a wet clutch system. It's the more durable type design. You're gonna find some economy tractors out there on the market that still do have dry clutches. Those are gonna get away with more off-spec oils. 
When we move though to hydrostatic transmissions, we gotta talk about more things. Now understanding gear drive transmissions and a little bit of tolerance that we can have here for all spec oils. When we move into hydrostatic transmissions, you're gonna find experiences that are completely different. When you're driving a hydrostatic transmission, you have a variable displacement pump, right? When you push down on your pedal here, it's moving so it's called a swash plate that's changing how much oil is pumped out of the back of your transmission. And it's pumping that oil into a hydraulic motor that spins and actually turns your transmission and drives your tractor forward. Because you have hydraulic fluid going through that pump and motor system that has really precise tolerances inside of it, hydrostatic transmissions can be very sensitive to the oil that's being pumped through that system. And that oil can be extremely sensitive to temperature. If you're in southern climates where it's typically warm, even with a hydrostatic transmission, UD, the regular standard UDT or a slightly off-spec oil you might get away with it okay, but when you're in northern climates like we are up here at Messick's and things get cold and oils get thick, it doesn't always like to pump properly through that pump and motor system or your viscosity might be a little bit off and your end result is gonna be additional noise out of your transmission, sluggishness out of your transmission, and what's called cavitation. If you hear a lot of whining sound or you pull your dipstick out and you see frothing and bubbling on the top of your oil, that's air bubbles being generated inside of those mechanical components and slowly wearing away the metal as it happens. You may not see a catastrophic result immediately by running the wrong oil and causing cavitation, but over time you are doing slow damage to your transmission by wearing those metal components away. So again, in a southern climate you might get away with an off-spec oil in a warm in a hydrostatic transmission, but if you're like us up here like Messick's, you're going to know when it's 30 degrees outside and your tractor's not running right if you don't have a winter modified oil like Super UD2 in your transmission case. As we get into bigger equipment, the concerns start to change a little bit. And big equipment gets complicated, right? You can have closed center hydraulic systems that have pumps much like those hydrostatics do. You can have uh, CVT transmissions that are running in oil baths. You can have power shift transmissions that have lots of clutch plates in them, right? Uh, big equipment transmissions get complicated fast and it's a lot of what drives the performance of this equipment and putting it into the right application. It's important stuff to be able to understand. If I paint this one though with a broad brush, I'd say as the equipment gets bigger and the things get more expensive, I get more careful about putting the right stuff in the machine. These things might be a little less sensitive about specific viscosities because you're not pumping oil through that hydrostatic transmission in the same way, but they can be a lot more sensitive when it comes to additive packages because of the amount of clutches and brakes and that kind of stuff that you have in these machines that are counting on certain wear aspects to those fluids. A lot of times you're getting those better additive packages by going to more deluxe fluids. We will go off brand at times for some of these machines, but we're going off brand with high end products, not off brand because we're trying to buy cheap stuff to save money. So if I try to sum all of these things up, when it comes to the people that are out there giving advice on this topic, I think everybody's opinions are probably correct, right? Your experiences are valid but your experience may not translate to somebody else, right? Repeating what you have seen as loudly as possible, it's just simply not that simple, right? You need to understand what somebody runs, what transmission they have, what their climate looks like in order to be able to make a good recommendation of what hydraulic fluid actually is going to work properly in that machine. When it comes to what we recommend here at Messix, you saw that long line of oils back here inside. We trust the manufacturer's recommendation for your machine because fundamentally they're the only ones that know. Hydraulic fluids do not have clear specifications. It's very hard to cross-reference them correctly. And even though we buy oils by the tanker load for use inside here in our shops, we always follow the manufacturer's guidance. Does that cost you a little bit more money at the end of the day? Yes, it probably does. But when we compare those bulk purchased quality hydraulic fluids that we buy to the OEM alternatives, they're typically priced fairly close to each other. You don't pay a super unreasonable premium for the OEM oil. If you go back on our channel here, we've talked about oil stuff for a long time and filters. This is one of my favorite topics. And one thing that I think I have consistently seen out there is that quality products, be it the OEM recommendation or a quality 
quality aftermarket option, be it hydraulic fluids, engine oils, or filters, tend to be priced pretty close to each other. If you go find a quality aftermarket oil, it is gonna be priced fairly close to what the OEM recommendation is. If you buy a really cheap hydraulic fluid, it is probably a cheap hydraulic fluid. And we've seen this as we've cut filters apart over the years too, right? You take a cheap filter and you look at the insides of it and what have you bought? A cheap filter, right? You get, when it comes down to all of this stuff, fundamentally you get what you pay for. And if you look at the pricing and the complexity of all of this equipment today, I have never felt like these are gambles worth saving a couple of bucks over, right? So if you're looking for those maintenance items for your machine, you need those OEM filters, fluids, whatever, we sell a lot of this stuff here at Messix. It's all easily cataloged on our website to be able to go through and order it online. And if you'd like, personal customer service. We have a great group of people here who are happy to give it to you. So you can give us a call at 800-222-3373 or check us out at messix.com. We're here for all of your parts and service needs. <laughs> if you compare a quality off-market hydraulic fluid, eh, I'm saying too many words. Okay.